how to stop hitting behind the golf ball. Now, if you're a golfer, like me, you would have been on the course and experienced that shot. You stand there with an iron, the club lands into the ground, two, three, four inches behind it, the result is terrible and it feels terrible. So how do you fix it? Try this little exercise. You're gonna take the most lofty club you have, place the ball on a tee, take your setup, board in the middle of the stance, and you're just gonna move everything in front of that golf ball. Head, hips, weight, everything, handle. So everything is on my left-hand side. Now from here, if I tried to keep all my weight on my left hand side and I literally just lifted the club up and let it drop, what would it do? It would thump into the ground. Due to where I'm set up, it would go up and it would thump into the ground. Now because I'm leaning so far to my left, it's never gonna land over here. It's gonna land somewhere sort of target side of the ball. So what would, I, what would happen if I took my most lofty club, set myself up, loaded into my left side, and just did that little exercise. I'm just gonna move the club up and let it hit the ground. We get some height. We get a really nice strike. I've landed the club into the ground. I really felt that and I actually got a little bit of height. So even though that exercise might seem silly and it might look a bit strange, it's really just trying to change your mindset to say, weight on the lead side, club traveling downwards as it hits the ball, will work. The only reason the ball goes in the air is because you're using golf clubs that have got loft. That's the only reason. Everything that you're trying to do is about striking the ball. Now, if you're hitting the ground before the ball, it may well be that parts of your swing are trying to get the ball in the air. That little exercise teaches you that you do nothing to get the ball in the air. You trust the loft that's on the golf club. That's our first little exercise. Then we're gonna dive into something which has got a little bit more loft, I've got my seven. And in this first little exercise, I just want you to be thinking about your upper and your lower centers. Your upper center, that's gonna be my buttons, maybe my zip or maybe my microphone, and lower is your belt buckle. Now, all I want you to be thinking about here in your back swing is trying to keep your upper over your, over your lower. So what I mean is when I make it a real rotation, I'm trying to keep my buttons pretty much directly above my belt buckle. That's as simple as I want you to think about it. Now, if we, look at this, slow it down, there might be a one or two degree difference or slight change. We're just looking to be about above and that's gonna help you make a much better turn. Now, when I do that, as I keep my upper above my lower and I stop at this point, my weight feels pretty much evenly distributed between both feet, some here, some here. And that's really key because the only time we ever really shift pressure or the only time we really feel that is when we're actually moving a club around our body at speed and it's a continual motion. When we make these static movements and stop, we don't feel that. So the last thing I want you to be doing in this little exercise is searching for that feeling of weight on that trail side. And unfortunately, that's what many golfers are doing because you know, golf instruction over the years has told us we need to be shifting our weight to our trail side. We kind of do need to be shifting pressure, but in this exercise, when you're just trying to rehearse a backswing pivot, we really should be keeping the upper above the lower and the weight should feel pretty centered. So if we can do that, weight feels as if it's distributed between both feet, upper stays above lower, we're in a really good position at the top where we're in a position to start our downswing. The downswing. This is where it all goes wrong for many golfers. So a lot of it is because of that, you know, mental kind of scar tissue almost of trying to help the ball in the air. That first exercise will help. But here's a really simple concept to think about. You're going to think about your eye position and your ear position. Watch what happens to, and you can probably use the peak of my hat as a reference here, but watch what happens to the peak of my hat as I make a backswing motion. Fairly level, but then as I turn, you'll notice that it has tilted slightly. What that means is my lead eye is lower than my trail eye, my lead ear is lower than my trail ear. Pretty natural, I need that to be able to rotate. If you're hitting the ball heavy, you're hitting the ground before the ball, what can often happen is that tilt changes. Big difference there, you can see how my eyes are on a, a very different angle, obviously the peak of my hat and my ears are very similar. So think about it this way, strange concept I know. Imagine there's gonna be water falling out of one of your ears. In the backswing, it's gonna be falling out of my lead ear. What we need to avoid is a transition and a downswing where it falls out of your trail ear. I feel like I've got more weight on my trail side, my trail shoulder is too low, and if I do that, I'm always gonna be landing the club into the ground before the ball. How do I miss the ground? Well, the only real way I can do it is by standing up really early. That's not gonna help. Or by flexing the elbows. 
And again, that's not gonna help either. What we need to be doing is feeling, and again, this is the key, it's not necessarily the reality, is feeling that that water would be falling out of your lead ear for as long as you possibly can. Where's that put me? Well, it's put me nearly in that position we were in that first little exercise. There's a really important message here that we have to, when we hit our iron clubs, we have to hit the ground. Can't get away from that unless you tee it up really high, but you have to hit the ground. So if you're hitting the ground before the ball, guess what? You're doing part of it correctly. You're hitting the ground. That's what we needed to do. What we have to do with your goal sync is just change where that is. We don't want it this side. We want it this side. How do we change it? Body shape. That's the key message. If we can get your body shape different, we're going to be in a better position. So what do we do? We make a backswing where our upper stays above our lower. And in transition, we make that water feel like it's falling out of your lead ear as you move your weight. Once you're in this position, all you have to do now is trust the loft that is on the club, which goes back to that first little exercise that we did. So let's see if we can hit one. Got seven iron. This one's 184 yards. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be confident of hitting the ground and use the points that we've covered in this video to make that happen after the ball, not before the ball. Definitely hit the ground, but it was after the ball. I just didn't have the right club. I had seven and I hit six. Do you know what? I've just filmed a video a few minutes before, hit seven, came up short, and I still didn't change my club. So there's a message there as well to make sure you're choosing the right club. But that was perfect. You can see I've hit the ground where I needed to. And how I did that was all about how I moved my body shape correctly and had the right ideas over the golf ball.